In this video, we're going to look at some of the terminology we use when we simplify algebraic expressions. So firstly, what does this word simplify mean? And to understand that, we need to compare this word with other words such as solving, evaluating, or even calculating. What does it mean to evaluate something or to calculate something? Well, it basically means to just work it out. So a really simple example of evaluating or calculating might be 1 plus 2. What does 1 plus 2 equal? Well, it equals 3. Now in terms of algebraic expressions, when we evaluate or calculate, usually we're given an algebraic expression such as, let's say, x plus 2, and we are told that x equals something. So it might say, calculate x plus 2, given that x equals 1. And then in order to evaluate this or calculate this, we go, well, if x is 1, then 1 plus 2 will equal 3. I want you to take notice that when we evaluated or calculated, we got a solution that was a number. Let's now talk about solving something. Now, when we solve, you're going to get a solution that's going to be a number as well, just like evaluating and calculating. But the questions are usually a little different. And when we're solving, they usually give an equation. So they might give you something such as x plus 2 equals 3. They will then say something such as solve for x, which is just saying, what does x equal? And you can see when you look at it, x must be 1, because 1 plus 2 is 3. And we would write our solution as x being 1. You can see here, our solution is very, very similar to when we evaluated or calculated. It's similar because it's a number. The only difference being that instead of just writing a number down, we, we state that x equals this number. Alright, let's now move on to simplifying. Simplifying is very different to solving or evaluating and calculating, because simplifying in some ways is not really about answering the question, it's just about simplifying it. And, and what does that mean? It means to basically make something shorter or easier to read. I'll give you an example to illustrate this. Let's say a question asked you to simplify 3x plus 2x plus 4x. So you would simply go, well, if I have 3x's plus another 2x's, that's 5x, plus another 4x's makes 9x. So I will simplify it to 9x. Now, that's this question completed. I have simplified my expression here to 9x. But when you think about it, this is not solving. It's not evaluating or calculating. Otherwise, you would have got an answer that was a number, and it's not. It's just a simplified expression. I've made it shorter and easier to read. Another example I could give would be something such as 3ABC over 4AB. And you might remember when you divide expressions that you cancel anything where you have the same pronumeral above or below. So I'm going to cancel my A's and my B's, giving me the expression 3C over 4. So I haven't evaluated, I haven't calculated or, or solved the question. I've just simplified it. I've taken away some of the pronumerals here and made my expression shorter and easier to read. Now what can become confusing at times is maths teachers end up overusing this word to simplify. And the reason they do that is because you can use it in place of evaluating and calculating. Just think about this. If I had the question 1 plus 2 and I wanted to simplify it, 
by answering the question by stating that it equals 3, I have also simplified my expression because 3 is a more simplified version of 1 plus 2, which means that you can use the word simplify in place of evaluating and calculating. But you can't do it the other way around. You can't use the words evaluate or calculate in place of simplify. All right, let's move on to our next word, pronumeral. And I've actually been using this word as I've been speaking. And pronumerals are, are basically the letters that we use in maths. So you're familiar with using X, Y, A, B, C, and so on. And we need to clear something up. It's not just the letters we use in maths. The word pronumeral actually means in place of a number. Okay, so we usually use letters in place of numbers. But it really just has to be any symbol. So I could use something such as a smiley face. Any symbol that you can think of can be used in place of a number. And these symbols are called pronumerals. Now there are other words that we can use instead of pronumerals. Some of these are variables. And another one that I can think of is an unknown. We call it an unknown because quite often we don't know what X is or Y is. So we can say it's an unknown number. The reason we often call them variables is because they vary or change. They vary or change. So what does that mean? Well, in one question, X might equal 1, and then in another question, X might equal 2. Two. So these pronumerals, they keep changing each time. Some other words we want to look at are yeah, algebraic expressions, equations, and, and terms. So we'll start with an algebraic expression. A simple algebraic expression might be something such as 2x minus 3y plus 1. Okay. Now, an equation is very, very similar to an algebraic expression with only one slight difference. To make an algebraic expression into an equation, I simply need to put an equal sign and show that it equals something, such as zero. So here we have an equation down below, just because of the equal sign, and an algebraic expression above that. Now this algebraic expression here actually has three terms. 2x is one term, negative 3y is the second term, and the 1 is our third term. Usually terms will be broken up by the minus or the plus sign. All right, we also want to talk about coefficients and like terms. So I'm going to write down a very basic algebraic expression. Let's go 2x minus 3y. I'd like to have a fraction this time, 4c over 5 minus 1. So this particular algebraic expression, which I've written down, has 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. Now if I look at just one of these terms, let's look at the first one here, 2x. I can say that this pronumeral x has a coefficient of 2. So this word coefficient basically means what number is to the left of the pronumeral. What coefficient does y have? y has a coefficient of negative 3. It's very important that you include the negative if it, if it has one. Alright, so what's the coefficient of c? Is the coefficient of c 4? Well, actually it's a little more complicated than that. The coefficient of c is actually 4 over 5. So we have to include the number below the fraction line here. I also want to define like terms. What, what are like terms? Well, like terms are basically terms that have the same set of pronumerals. So something such as 2a and 5a, these are two like 
terms. We can say they are like terms because they both have the same pronumeral of a. They have different coefficients of 5 and 2, but that doesn't matter. What's important here for them to be like terms is that the pronumerals are the same. If I had 2a and 5b, these would not be like terms because the pronumerals are different. We have a and b here. So we'll tick this for like terms and cross that for not like terms. And it can get a little more complicated, such as 2ab and 5ba. They have the same set of pronumerals. These are actually like terms because they both have 1a and 1b each. The order actually doesn't matter. It can get even more complicated with things such as 2x squared y and 5xy. These are not like terms. They, they both have an x and a y. But you'll notice that the first term has two x's and one y, whereas the second term has one x and one y. It's got to have the exact same set of pronumerals. So this one would have to have two x's and a y in order for the terms to be alike. Anyway, that concludes our video just introducing some of the terminology we use when simplifying algebraic expressions. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.